uh, Payogin Passion, who is not only a board member of Spotify, uh, author of Heavy Metal Management, and one of the most experienced investors in the region. We also have Matthias, who is right now uh, probably uh, in the epicenter of cool in the Nordics with Magin, the hottest startup around, uh, disrupting, not even disrupting, maybe even enhancing the TV industry. Uh, Matthias is the CTO and founder. And we're also waiting for Andreas Ian from uh, Spotify and, and, and rap fame, uh, as well as Soros Tavakoli from uh, Video Plaza. So w most of you have heard that there's a vibe going on in the Nordics. And what I would like to try to convey, especially for people that are going to see this later on on YouTube and from other countries that are not as knowledgeable in the region as the panelists are here today, I'd like to try to find out why. So what I would like to start with is give the word to Per Jorgen and say why. Why are so many things happening here? A fair chunk of all the VC exits combined actually come from the Nordics and there's a lot of beautiful companies like Skype and Spotify and ClickTech and, and you know you, the list goes on. What's your take on it? Yeah, I think uh, the first and foremost important thing is that uh, all our markets here in the Nordics are very small so once you uh, embark on st starting a company you have to address a global market opportunity it really doesn't make sense to address a local market uh, opportunity and that is quite different from most other uh, countries and startup communities uh, in in the rest of the world uh, so that fosters um, uh, a dynamic and very global mindset uh, in in the business creation uh, secondly, I think uh, uh, we have been fortunate to uh, have a number of very uh, prominent successes over the past 10, 15 years and they have created an ecosystem that has reached critical mass and that spawns uh, a new set of uh, uh, aspiring entrepreneurs, there is uh, plenty of capital available for the winners in the industry and there is also plenty of, of opportunities for uh, these companies to work with the large industries and, and the, the companies that uh, sort of feed from the, all the benefits that are created through, uh, through the likes of uh, Spotify, Klarna, um, you know, ClickTech, you, you name it. Yeah, but if, if, if you look at that, I mean, you could say Belgium is a small country as well, Portugal is one, you know, Denmark is one, and they still don't have uh, the same number of companies. So there must be something else in the source, something that is that is more powerful than just being small and remote. Um, so yeah. it, is, it, is it the role models, you would say, or is it sort of uh, that we got burned really bad and learned a lot during the dot-com crash, or are there any other things? Yeah, well, there uh, there is certainly something about what happened during the dot-com heydays, that there was a new breed of uh, entrepreneurial um, uh, appetite that uh, started to uh, to grow really rapidly and uh, that uh, entrepreneurial appetite then uh, uh, I think uh, by the virtue of that the, the government also supported the uh, in in a pretty significant way, the build up of an ecosystem and, and infrastructure such as the home PC program, or or the fact that uh, we got uh, broadband penetration, uh, probably one of the quickest markets in the world to get that really quickly, created a uh, a group of people who were really savvy on how to make uh, do business on the internet. Uh, and uh, around that, uh, there there was uh, the the old legacy of uh, Ericsson, the Nokia's, and all those uh, large companies that sort of fed into that uh, new uh, breed of entrepreneurs. Uh, so uh, I think if you look at and compare us to uh, Copenhagen or or to Berlin, for that matter, I think we have a much deeper and broader ecosystem than in these other markets. But are, are Swedes nicer? <laughs> I mean, I, I sometimes feel that, that here we're kind of helpful and we're like uh, hanging out with each other. In some other markets, it's, it's more like competitive or uh, in the German market, you know, they're cloning each other left and right. And there's a lot of sort of, uh, there's a lot of fierce competition as well. Whereas here, I think that there's sort of a Swedish entrepreneurial vibe that is quite friendly and, and helpful to each other. I don't know if that's something that you would agree to. 
Well, if I, I should continue with it, I, I think uh, the, the MySQL um, movement that started some, uh, even I think maybe 15 years ago almost, uh, uh, is basically uh, an open source idea and that open source idea is uh, incredibly powerful uh, and that has permeated the the um, uh, ecosystem in a very uh, many ways and uh, I think also if you meet uh, uh, and maybe Matthias could uh, be uh, the judge of this better than I am but I get the sense that entrepreneurs meet a lot and uh, talk about how they can sort of uh, interact and uh, find different ways to move forward. And uh, the whole open, uh, open uh, source movement uh, has taken a different uh, um, and a, an in increased uh, role in society, not only sharing code, but also sharing in, in a more general sense. So it's like the, tech, the techie hippie equivalent. Sort of sure. People. Yeah, we. Um, I, I have some difficulties in 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 connecting with our uh, dear friends Andreas and Soros. They're here, but I need to send another invite. So we'll take a ten second pause here and try to get them in. Just bear with me one second. Um, and you can continue. Yeah, no. could you get me back to uh, Could you get him back to uh, there, there we are. Now hopefully they can join us shortly as well. Meanwhile, Matthias, yeah. Madgen. What is Madgen? Well, Madgen is a cloud-based TV service. It's uh, Basically, we went back to the roots thinking about television and why is television still in, in the normal world, still the strongest media, being an offline uh, system. So we basically thought, how do we involve this and how would it look if it was created today? So if TV was created today, that was the starting point. That's quite yeah. interesting. Uh, I, I often think about that, like if voting was created today, would it be that we put paper in boxes every four years or would it be differently? Uh, so if TV was created today, what would be the experience? What do you think that, that uh, or what, what are you actually offering uh, that is different than, than, than uh, the traditional TV? Yeah, first and foremost, you wouldn't be stuck. It would be able as a consumer to watch television or media anywhere you want. Because if you think about it, watching television today is actually kind of a strange behavior in, in today's world. You're stuck in, in uh, having a cable or you're stuck in having a satellite uh, and then you have to have receivers and you have to have cards and you have to have cables to each and every television set and you're stuck at watching television at the wall. And take music for instance with, with Spotify, it's a fantastic user experience and you can bring your music with you everywhere. Uh, and, and that has really transformed how you listen to music uh, by when it comes to television. Hello Andreas. Hey. Yeah, hello. Sorry about the confusion with the invites. No worries. We're just listening to Matthias sharing some of, some of the, uh, the thinking behind Madrian. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And um, to continue that, to really look into the behavior, because television still stands for about 90% of all the viewing ex the behavior today, is that what works in television is that consumers actually like sitting back and actually watch something easy. So one of the most uh, used today behavior is creating playlists for different things. If you want to watch, listen to music, you, you, you do playlists. If you want to do YouTube, they start doing playlists. So every, everything starts to resolve around that. And television is actually playlists. If you look at a channel during a day, they have put a lot of time and effort in, in programming a guide that sticks perfectly into their target group. And why not free that up? So one of the things we do at Madden is that we do broadcasting live, so you can watch all your television on all your devices, but you can also watch everything that's been aired, uh, which means that we actually use the playlists which are created. And we can do that uh, as long as the right holder says right for. So, uh, which means that we actually use the playlists which are created. And the, uh, there's some background noise coming in here. Uh, which means that we actually use 
That's better. Hi, Soros. Very welcome. <laughs> Listen to Matthias sharing I'm something. I'm going to mute. Maybe it's me. Sorry. Hold on. Uh, Matthias, oh, I, w w when I saw Spotify the first time, before coming into the meeting, I thought it was completely unconceivable that it would work. And I was up one of the early days at the office and just had a rundown on what it, the user experience was. And from that second, I was sold. Uh, I had the same, uh, the same kind of feeling when I went to Imagine. I did not believe that the TV channels would ever buy into it or that the users would use it, it would be too complicated. And then you see it and it makes so much sense. Is there any chance we can see just like a 30 second version or something like that? Yeah, I think so. It's actually a product which you talk a lot about, but it's much easier to understand it when you see it. So okay, take it away. Let me just bring out my iPad then, just to quickly. You have to be the judge if you can see this in a good way. Uh, I'm going to just start my, uh, my iPad here with, uh, with Madion. Do you see it well? Yeah. So basically when it comes to this, here you have the, the, the broadcasting signal now. That's what's live currently. So, so imagine the, the red I thing is what's happening right now exactly. and the green things are programs. Yeah, exactly. That's the live broadcast which you're used to watching when you watch television. So if I just want to press something here and, and, and watch it like uh, the news hour from, from um, uh, TV4 News here. I can just start watching uh, news live directly. So this is live broadcasted television. But I actually perhaps wanted to see this program from the beginning. So I can actually start, go, just go back here and watch this news from the beginning. So I can flow between live and on demand at any instance, at any program. So I'm, I'm never stuck. And how far time. back can you go in time? Well, technically, uh, we don't have a limitation. Uh, but it's about rights with the, with the program owner. Mm -hmm. So it depends on channel. Uh, generally, it's seven days. Mm -hmm. But some channels who own all their content themselves, we can basically store it forever. And, and, uh, and how do you get that on the real TV, so to speak? Yeah. Let me show you that in, a, in a, a second. The other thing I just wanted to watch is for all these channels, you can just go back and press any program on any channel, and you'll be able to see it. So all the channels are live uh, forever, so you're never stuck in time with what you want to see. Um, and to answer your other question there, um, of course we support, support the, the Apple AirPlay and stuff like that, but more importantly is to reach the television set in a really good way. So I'm going to pull the screen up there so we have our television set in the background. So I start this television set here. And then I bring up I'll wait for it to start. Here I bring up Madion. So now we integrate it directly into the television set with Madion. Because it is still where most people watch television is on the television set. So what happens here is that I get an instruction on how to add these television sets to my Madian account. And then I pull up my, my iPad again here. And I press here that I want to add a new device to my system. You see it? I press add device. I get a camera. That camera is connected to my television set. And then, yes, I name it, I call it this just my TV, and done. Now this television is actually connected to my device, or to my, my system. So now we will actually be able to watch television here in the background. Uh, and now we're connecting everything to the television. So now I can just bring up my iPad here and press anything I want to watch. And that will directly start on my television set in the background. And how are you going to make money on this? It's quite well, we easy are. to see why you would get users, but uh, what, what's the business model? Uh, basically, we are a, a pay TV uh, product, so it's, it's a, a monthly subscription. So you'll be able to subscribe to all your channels on all your devices to watch anywhere. And, uh, cheaper yeah. or more expensive than cable? Well, uh, most probably cheaper. Great. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to jump to to uh, to, to somebody else. Uh, so, Ross, you're uh, you have started a company in the Nordics, and you're taking on the world, growing in, in many different countries. And one of the things that we're we're trying to figure out here is 
why are Nordic companies doing very well in the industry sector? What would be your take? Um, I think there's always... Do you hear me, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, hi, everyone. Sorry for the, for the complications. Um, I think there's many reasons. I mean, in the end, I would say personally... Uh, I would say three things, probably. Um, first and foremost, I would say the ecosystem mm -hmm. is extremely important with other entrepreneurs, um, for myself, it's been you know people like Hendrik Torstensson, who was uh, one of our first angel investors. It's been Daniel Ek, obviously, uh, huge inspiration. Still, still today, every time you meet him, you know, you just get so much energy and and kind of uh, helps you expand your your ambitions and and your vision. Um, and I'm also quite excited. Actually, I did my first angel investment just uh, a month back into a company called Freebie. So. Kind of really excited about also being able to very good entrepreneur also yeah um, exactly yeah you know them really That's, well yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say second would be you know the amazing infrastructure we have uh, in Sweden in general uh, you know it's a country of early adopters uh, stuff like Magin will work really well uh, I mean in terms of online video from from our perspective um, we were really early on with having the play services. Uh, the broadcasters were quite proactive, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously we we could support them in building out their business and building a profitable business around their online and digital services. Tell, um, tell, tell, just tell the audience what is uh, yeah. what is Video Plaza, the thirty second yeah. version. Absolutely. So Video Plaza is the leading video ad management platform for the new TV. So we uh, effectively five years ago we we started our business. Um, with the ambition to uh, support any video publisher, be it a broadcaster or any other media company, to build a profitable business around IP delivered video. And you know, today we've got uh, more than 75 customers around 23 markets, um, six offices, and we are actually uh, all nowadays headquartered in London, um, but we still have product and engineering in Stockholm. What, what does it feel like when you come out and say, hey, I'm Swedish, we're, uh, you know, we're a fast-growing digital company. Do you get a lot of respect for being Swedish or sort of do you, yeah, yeah. Do you say, well, well, what are you doing in Germany or the UK? That really matters. Or, or how does no, no, no. I, I think you get a lot of like, oh, yeah, you know, wow, another Swedish company. Wow, there's so many companies from the Nordics. And you often get the question, why? Um, you know, why are there so many successful startups coming out of the Nordics? Uh, and you know, I think uh, I think the answer to that is exactly you know it's an amazing infrastructure. I think that there's a great ecosystem now of, of people who are kind of contributing back, and I can just you know uh, I'm just waiting for kind of the next next generation of you know Spotify, Video Plaza, Rap. I don't know all these uh, the alumni uh, again. You know all the companies that will come out of that, and then I think also kind of a, the, the Nordic culture, I think we're quite compliant with other cultures. Mm -hmm. um, so we can do business in Spain with the Germans, with the French, etc. And, and there's no kind of, you know, uh, I don't know, glitches or... Uh, um, so I, I think that's also very important. And obviously with this very tiny home market, we're forced to go out straight away, which also kind of tests the stress test the company, the business model, making sure from day one it's actually built Mm. for multiple regions and markets, um, that's, which that's, other that's, offerings might not get. Um, that's something that I hear, hear a lot when I see business plans and, you know, I've been mean, in South America and elsewhere. I mean, there's a zero missing in the business plan very often. They're very sort of local and very sort of thinking about uh, creating a company that feeds the family more than sort of changes the world, or at least there's an element of that. Uh, but here or in Israel, you always have an international ambition. And I was in a very interesting sort of think tank with Yossi Vardi and some others in, 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 uh, in Israel. And we had a dinner at the Temple of David where uh, it was discussed, why Israel? And so Yossi Vardi said, well, everybody says it's because the military builds a lot of good engineers or because there is ample venture capital or because there is, you know, there was a lot of reasons. They said, all that is wrong. It's because our mothers are never happy with us. So, you know, even Google's, uh, you know, Sergey Brin's mother said, Google schmoogle, when are you going to finish school? Uh, so, so that was the Israeli secret. Um, I'm the same with Persians. Yeah. You know. <laughs> same thing in Persian. Yeah. 
So, uh, Andreas, you've been you've been sort of one of one of the poster boys of of uh, successful Swedish technology entrepreneurship. What is your what are your experiences from from uh, from Spotify? And now that you're doing rap, uh, could you please share share some of your sort of uh, the homegrown Swedish uh, secret sauce for for creating internet success? Well, I think uh, I think storage is onto a lot of the reasons. I mean, one one thing which maybe hasn't been stressed enough is that I think Sweden may have about the right size um, in order to both realize that it's too small to be a market in itself, but um, it's big enough so that you can use it for trials. So you can launch your service, you can launch your beta, whatever you want to call it in Sweden, and you know you can. Iterate here with a relatively easygoing market. People are um, early adopters on a larger extent than most places of the world. Um, so they will try your stuff. You'll get feedback. You can find product market fit without huge capital costs here, and then um, then you can expand out. But it'll like it'll always, as you said, you know. That that missing zero will will more often be in the original business plan here because people understand that Sweden is not going to be big enough. If you mm -hmm. do this in Brazil or even in like France or Germany or the UK or definitely the US, then you have a huge home market and it's easy to limit yourself to that. Or you know even even if you don't do it consciously, you know that you want to build a global business, you still see that as kind of second phase. Whereas here, it's always the first phase, mm -hmm. or at least it tends to be for the companies that are interesting, because we will we would never consider a company um, in the internet space that is targeting only Sweden particularly interesting. Um, but we we've been we've been very good with technology as well. I mean, Madgen is extremely complex to build very easy. As the same thing goes with 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 Spotify. I don't know how complex Rap is, but there's technological complexity that we solve very well in Skype and 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 so forth. Now yeah. I'm starting to sound like a football commentator. When we're winning, I'm saying we. You hear that? Exactly. Yeah, but you're, but you're, so. including, you're including Skype, which was headquartered in UK and had its developers in Estonia and. In this yeah, it's you know a, a success story has many parents. Uh, it's it's like uh, you know in Luxembourg they say it's from Luxembourg because they tax in Luxembourg. Whenever uh, whenever British media talks about Spotify, it's a British company. They never yeah. say it's a Swedish company. They might say Anglo Swedish at times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what, what do you think? Why do you think the tech the, the, the a lot of uh, sort of tech success? Has well, at least. And it, there's there's a couple of elements to that I think. I mean, for one, Sweden does have um, a long history of a good engineering culture. We have been building um, successful global engineering companies for more than a hundred years. Mm -hmm. Especially if you if you take into account that it is a small country, it has been I think um, performing uh, you know over par for its size, but. Um, there's also another aspect which is interesting, and it's it's um, a contrast to what you experienced in Israel or what um, what Soros said about Persian culture, where you know you no, no matter how successful you are, your mother is never satisfied. I think <laughs> I think Swedish moms and dads are much easier to satisfy, and I don't think Swedish kids are you know on an international scale particularly pressured. And there's a lot of a lot of downside to that, but there's there might be an upside too in the sense that kind of Swedish educational culture leaves bigger room for creativity and and kind of critical mm -hmm. thinking on an earlier stage than than um, a learning culture that is more based on kind of doing what the teacher says and and learning like everything by heart. Um, and That's that, an, I haven't heard that before. That's an interesting take. I I think that. Uh, I think that resonates really well with, with some of my thinking as well, that there's a playfulness and there's a, a, a willingness to try things. And, and somebody put it with other words, saying that if you don't have to get a job, you can just study and get paid and you have a society that takes care of you, so you're not really afraid that you know if you have toothache, you're not, not going to be able to pay for it. Maybe you'll play around a lot more with, with doing other things than just trying to get a job, and that can be very good for creat creativity as well. It's almost like uh, Maslow's pyramid, right? I mean, in Sweden, you you always know that you have a house, you got food on the table, you you can even do your annual two trips abroad, right? Even in a worst case scenario, yeah. which allows you to 
to say, you know what, I'm going to go all in and bet everything I have on this idea that I'm really passionate about. And you know what, worst case, I'll still go to Mallorca and hang on the beach twice a year. Um, yeah, but that's that's also, I mean, that's true for a fairly large part of the population, but it's changing a little bit as well. Uh, I mean, I, I think we see a lot more segregation. Does anybody of you have any sort of thoughts on how we would pick up uh, everyone or sort of get more people the chance of becoming entrepreneurs and not just having uh, a, a business that pays the rent, but, you know, think bigger? It's not an answer to your question, but this might also be the downside of the, you know, what we were describing in more positive terms about how Swedish society works, right? Because, because there is less pressure, there is also, it's also less of a meritocracy, which means that people who do not come from, you know, the mainstream or who do not come from the establishment have a harder time getting noticed. And yeah. uh, I mean, if you look at Silicon Valley, half of the startups are founded by people who were not born in the US. Mm. If you look at Stockholm startups or Swedish startups, that's unfortunately not the case. If mm. you look at companies on a whole in, in Sweden, I'm sure that's the case. If you include like your local pizzeria and everything. But unfortunately, people who were not born in Sweden seldom go on to start the companies like Spotify or whatever. Um, so I think we're, we're, we may be a less meritocratic system because of, of kind of the big social infrastructure we have in place. Any of you other guys have any comments on that? I think your uh, uh, Andreas is quite right on that. Um, uh, it's uh, it's definitely uh, um, a situation where where uh, uh, it's it's sort of uh, difficult to get uh, people. Um, uh, from uh, from the outside of the usual suspects to uh, to uh, get into the top schools, and I think the top schools are still the most important recruiting ground for for uh, the um, uh, biggest startups and the best startups. Uh, and uh, being able to attract people, I think, is the key. Uh, element of uh, a successful startup uh, and uh, if you don't uh, if you're not on the inside then you sort of have a difficulty in really getting the attention of people like me also mm -hmm. uh, so, so I th that is definitely a problem and uh, uh, there are some initiatives uh, uh, happening uh, in order to get a, a larger share of the population engaged into not only uh, let's say um, uh, the lifestyle businesses, but more ambitious businesses. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, uh, that's uh, that's nowhere near where it should be, and mm -hmm. nowhere near what it is compared to other parts of of uh, uh, the world. What 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 can we do to to become even better here? What can we do to sort of invite the best talents from elsewhere, or stimulate people not to sort of I was going to say waste their life playing football, but I, I take that back and say focus too much on, on, on things that are not entrepreneurial. I mean, there's so many other things that kids decide to do, or there's so many people that get stuck in some place where they might not pursue their dreams well enough. And when you've sort of seen what is possible in the entrepreneurial world, uh, it's very easy to, to sort of start a new company, or at least try to. Whereas if, if, you, don't, if you don't have access to it, it's it's quite difficult to get in, it's quite club, it's very difficult to get capital, it's very difficult to, to sort of be at the right party. Uh, how can we become better in that? How can we sort of make Stockholm an even more important hub? I actually think you're correct because we talked a lot about we have a very good infrastructure for entrepreneurs here. It's actually we have a very, very good community where we help each other out and I've been helped a lot by different people. And, and uh, as we said, it's actually kind of hard to get into and you're not allowed to do that many errors either. If you make a, a, an error while trying to get into it because you don't know the codes, you're actually freezed out. So I think we need to be better at, at incorporating people into uh, the entrepreneurial uh, stuff of, of, of what we do because it's not that easy to get into. And what are some of the things, that the code that you've learned and that you yeah. didn't know when you started out? Yeah, it's, it's about how from, from from such an easy thing to how you pitch your ID to to how you interf interface with people if you're too sales oriented people will just shy away from you and and 
I, I think it's a lot of things, and, and it's not that easy to get into because you need to come up with an idea, or it's actually kind of a social thing also. It's the easiest way to interact with other people and get more help with someone introducing you to them. Mm -hmm. So if you come into it with no help and no connections, you don't get referrals to people you should talk to either. So it's, it's to, to be helpful to pick up new people would almost be like for these kind of social gatherings, would almost be to say, hello, I'm new, can you help me with introductions and something like that. Yeah, really try, try to help, help them into it. But isn't it like in the music industry, if you sing and play really, really good, somebody will make those introductions. Yeah finally, and there needs to be a filter because otherwise Per Jorgen wouldn't do anything else than just pick up the phone saying no. Or how do you look upon that? Do we have the right filters in place or should we make it easier for people to, to get a hold of capital and, and sort of advice? What do you think, Per Jorgen? Well, I think uh, th there are a couple of layers here uh, and since it's uh, uh, pretty much a, a law of the big numbers that uh, uh, define who should get uh, and what kind of, of capital? It's like, you know, Slatan Ibrahimovic. He made it to the top of the of the football league because he was a great uh, football player. But you know, uh, we all know that there are you know thousands of thousands of players that play uh, soccer every year uh, and start and and play in all kinds of the, of different leagues. And I think that goes th the same goes for. Uh, for uh, startups that you have to have a big ecosystem of uh, uh, d with with the companies of different characteristics and different uh, ambition levels and then out of that uh, you feed an elite that uh, that sort of merit um, uh, venture capital because venture capital is not really good for everybody it's good for some kinds of companies that need to build uh, 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 for instance, a product before it hits the market. It, it's not necessary when you build a consulting uh, company, for instance. Uh, so there are a number of situations where where uh, capital is um, is scarce, obviously. Uh, but there are also, I think, uh, for those people who are really performing and who are extremely skilled at what they're doing, I think they most of the time experience that there is plenty of capital available, mm. uh, even competition to, uh, among capital providers. I mean, I, I, just to add to that, I mean, I would say I think it's important that the natural entrepreneurs, we've all met some of them, that they know and that they can find their path to become an entrepreneur and that they don't end up necessarily in a, you know, in a, in a, in a large corporation where most likely they will actually not thrive and be successful. They will most likely even feel, you know, hindered and, and um, so I think that's very important. Well, Slatan shouldn't become an ice hockey player. Somebody should show him the path to football. That's what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. And if he would have been, you know, an ice hockey player, he would probably not be, be very successful. Uh, so I'm just saying, so for example, personally, I, I do, you know, two or three times a year, I would go and talk at that at, uh, KTH. Um, for and I did this actually just two months ago. I spoke for the first graders. They the were Royal three Institute weeks of in. Technology. Yeah. Exactly, media technology, and and you know, like they were three weeks in. They didn't know. They didn't have a clue what they wanted to be. They didn't really know what they what the options would be, etc. And just going in there and in plain Swedish, tell them, you know, the story. My story. I was there just five years ago, and you know what, you know, my path of where I ended up and. I had a lot of great feedback afterwards saying, wow, I just feel so excited, uh, you know, that, hey, this is one of the paths that, 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 that could be for me. And obviously, probably, you know, 90% plus of those people will never become an entrepreneur and they shouldn't be. But maybe there's one or two. I mean, in my class, there was Peter Arvai, you know, who, who went and became CEO of Prezi. There was Alex from SoundCloud, mm -hmm. and, you know, and it was me. And hey, you know, maybe there were three entrepreneurs in that in that class as well, who knows? Yeah, I was, I was in school with Eric Wickstrom, the CEO of Madrin, and with you on Stahl, and you know, there was a bunch of us back, back then as well, spray founders and so forth. No, but I think that some, some of the things I'm bringing with me from this, this brief discussion is that uh, there is something special going on in the region. It has ecosystem reasons. We also have a lot of good infrastructure. We have a community that helps out and sort of cares. We're not too pressured by our parents or our schools, which, which might sort of give some, some creative breathing space. 
and it's also a, a fairly decent small size market. So you can try, you can get uh, you know feedback that things work before you take on the world, which is something we always uh, seem to want to do from here. So these things constitute parts of the secret sauce. But then there is also um, then 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 there is also uh, um, an elite group of people that are inspired by other I I elite performers. Just kind of like we had tennis before with Bjorn Borg, we got a Mats Vilander, and we got a lot of other tennis players. Uh, that that stopped with with uh, Ingmar Ste and Martin Slalom because there weren't so many others coming over, and then they were, the role models didn't look the same. And then then uh, what I also bring with me from the discussion is that. Uh, we need to help entrepreneurs find their path. So people that are entrepreneurs need to get the bug early on, need to get the right speech at KDH or whatever they meet, or maybe even in school. And perhaps if we do that and keep on attracting uh, elite entrepreneurs, we can continue this legacy. So uh, a lot of food for thought. This discussion will be continued, and, and most of you will also be, be having different roles at SIM next week. So we'll publish this, and this will be on the YouTube channel and on Simon's webpage. So uh, I hope to continue the discussion then, and thank you very much for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.